We're a rich media advertising platform and we aim to leverage distributed ledger technology to reinvent the ad industry. The ad industry is completely riddled with problems with every level and every corner of the ad industry. And we're hoping to uh, reinvent it and for the very first time to reward consumers for their participation and input into the ad industry. Welcome to Hedera Hashgraphs, gossip about gossip. If you are a developer, an entrepreneur, crypto enthusiast, or just trying to learn more about how distributed ledger technology and Hedera Hashgraph will impact your industry, then you'll love the episodes that we have coming up. Bookmark us, add us to your podcast app, and stay tuned. Hey there, and welcome to Hedera Hashgraph Gossip About Gossip. I'm Paul Madsen. So in these few weeks post OA, I I confess I spend a sometimes inordinate amount of time just looking at our dashboard and tracking performance, TPS and and latency and and related numbers. Because, you know, at the end of the day, if if we're not seeing people use the platform, if we're not seeing our capacity eventually reach, then you know, what's the point? Which is why I'm happy to have on today Ian Mullins, the CEO and founder of AdStax, because AdStax is a notable early user DAP of the platform who's pumping through a not small fraction of the TPS we're already seeing. Welcome, Ian. How are you? Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate the introduction. Yeah, we've achieved some uh, fantastic numbers recently. Yeah. Thanks for the business. Thanks for the TPS. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about AdStax. We're a rich media advertising platform, and we aim to leverage distributed ledger technology to reinvent the ad industry. The ad industry is completely riddled with problems with every level and every corner of the ad industry, and we're hoping to uh, reinvent it and for the very first time to reward consumers for their participation and input into the ad industry. I understand that one aspect of AdStack's value is mitigating ad fraud. I read or listened to a, another interview on ad fraud and they said it was such a big problem, like billions of dollars, both because it's relatively easy as a form of fraud and because the payout is so significant. Would you agree? In the past, it has been. The the world is changing. Everybody, including us and the big players, is trying to combat this. And the industry itself, unfortunately, has got inherent problems with how it's structured. And you've got many inefficiencies on every level. You've got ad tech on top of ad tech, verification company after verification company, and verification companies verifying the verifiers. And at the end of this, the result is that there's so many middlemen and so many inefficiencies across the industry, and it creates opportunities for people to try and gain the system and people to automatically generate income. The world is changing, and it needs a big change for the industry to sort itself out. So the ad industry you know, sounds almost tailor-made for DLTs in, in that there is a middleman or middlemen who arguably take more than their fair share of the cut as well that there could be value in a, in a more transparent model and, and so mitigate some attacks, if you will, like, like fraud. That's right. Uh, you know, you could sum it up in one word, really, trust. There's a massive trust in, uh, problem across the whole industry. And it's evolved over years to get to a point where it's just become super inefficient. And so AdStax is building on Hedera. How is Hedera going to help AdStax give that trust to the the users of the platform? Well, today we use Hashgraph to augment our platform with DLT to help brands to track and verify and understand their data. So the first step for us is to bring the transparency to the industry so everybody can understand what's happening, what's the user doing, and you can actually see the data. So if there's a, an issue with one publisher or one advertiser, the data is going to be available, it's going to have been verified, and it's going to be stored in one central single place. So anybody can have a look at it. So that alone solves one whole category uh, within the advertising ad tech stack problem. You can have to track, verify, and understand your data better. So you, you're saying the data and, and tracking, what, what exactly are you storing on Hedera and what does that represent? We're not storing anything on Hedera. Just to be clear, we will be having our own mirror node and having our own storage. And so that's the, really the next step for us. At the moment, we're processing, to date, we've done over 100 million live programmatic ad events have been processed on the main net. And we currently batch them into tens to save us a bit of money. So in terms of transactions, we have just hit, we've just done over 10 million transactions have processed on Hedera. 
this is a big number. We've actually proven the very first step in reinventing the ad industry that we've got a, a DLT platform that we can use that's going to solve these problems. And it's live right now. We faced massive problems over the last few years when we've been looking at this about the scale, the capacity. And there was, oh, we found something that might do it. And then it was like, oh, the cost is ridiculous. Hedera has answered all of our big key questions. It's working for us. We've hit massive big numbers. If it works for us, the use cases for other people and other developers are going to be endless because we prove the biggest problem in this industry in terms of transactions and throughput. It's there and it's super low cost. The 10 million transactions we did cost us about 1600 US dollars. 1600 that's it. That's on a CPM in the advertising world, that's 1.6 cents CPM. It's tiny. So we've proved the commercial opportunity. We've validated that with real data. We've put it through Hedera and it's working. It's not even under any strain or any pressure whatsoever. So it's fantastic news for everybody. So I'm, I'm going to take that feedback back to the pricing committee and indicate that we're not charging enough and we can uh-huh. raise fees because Ian, Ian says it's too cheap. <laughs> no, the, the, the low cost is what actually makes this possible, I'll be honest with you, because, you know, without that, you, you've seen the numbers we've done already. And I'll be honest with you, we're a relatively small company in the ad world. So the, the network is able to handle tens of millions of, of events. We did some tests last week on TPS and we did 125 transactions per second average over a one minute period. So 125 TPS and yeah, not many people even noticed and uh, nor did the system. It's got so much spare capacity. So uh, that, that's great news. Yeah, I- indeed. 125. I would have noticed it if I happened to be gazing at the performance that's numbers right. at that time. But yeah, we're even in these initial days, uh, we could handle 10,000. So yeah, bring it on. We're ready. Cool. So the proposition in, in mitigating fraud, if I understand correctly, then is is sort of creating this transparent, auditable record of key events, quote unquote, in an ad and how users engage with it. Is that fair? It is, yeah. So we track all the events. I'll give you one example of how we're going to be using consensus to really help us to, to the fullest extent. So when a user hits a web page and they go on their journey to, to looking at adverts or looking at content on a page, they create a, a trail of events. So when they request an ad, we do security and fraud checks um, and we serve an ad back. So it's loaded onto the phone. So we know that a, a, you know, a CDN, a content delivery network, ours has served an advert to the mobile device. We can see that it's loaded on the device. We then get an event for that. They have to physically see that on the device. It can't be seen in the background. There's various ways that we do that for a certain amount of time. So we can track that an advert has actually been shown on our system, and then we can log that with Hedera. So an impression event has been generated. It it can only be seen when the, the user is in view. And so that we can see that If an advert has taken, say, uh, four seconds to load, but somebody has made a click event or another event before the four seconds, and we know how long it's supposed to take to load, we'll be able to say, well, that's definitely fraud because they haven't waited. They didn't know. And we can run in. uh, I won't give you all of the uh, secret source clues, but we can run various checks that just to double check that this is a human. They are a, a real person in the right location. And we can uh, double check that the advert was in view and their user journey should be A, B, C, D, not A, B, C, or, and then F and G. <laughs> you know, so we've got to get the right order. So, so tracking the order in which events are supposed to occur is going to enable us to block out a whole new level of fraud which occurs in the industry. But unfortunately, there's not one solution for fraud. There is a big basket of solutions and a long list of things that we have to do. And the fraudsters are constantly updating their systems to try and gain the system all the time. So it's it's a constant fight. But straight away off the bat, we can see that we have the capacity, we've got the scale, our algorithms and our optimization will be hopefully ahead of the fraudsters and we can catch them before they do anything. If we don't, we'll be able to see it, we'll be able to track it, we'll be able to act on it and then optimize and do better if somebody gets through. So Ian, mitigating fraud protects the publisher, right? Which is great to hear, but what's in it for me? What's in it for me as a, as a user, as a ad viewer? 
It's true. Mitigating fraud protects the publisher, but it also protects the advertiser as well. And we're trying to cut out a number of middlemen that are simply not going to be needed. But the consumer, the most important people we believe in the whole value chain that we're going to place at the top, we're looking to reward them for every interaction they make. If they've seen an advert, they'll be paid a tiny micro amount of value that they can store and they can see every day how many ads they've seen, how much money they generated. If they clicked on any ad, they'll get a a higher payment. If they allow us to use their data, they'll get a higher payment. And also if they go and purchase the product, then they're going to get another incentive as well. So it's about creating a new link between the advertiser and the consumer and a whole completely new paradigm shift in the way that they can communicate and work together. So it it occurs to me that if my daughter gets paid for watching an ad while on my Wi-Fi, I should get a cut. (laughs) <laughs> Definitely, you should. We should. We can. We should add that to our feature list. You know, so the please get a cut or a, a, an incentive scheme for the parents. <laughs> please do. Well, not parents in general. Just me. <laughs> My daughter uses a fair amount of Wi-Fi. <laughs> sure, sounds like a good model. So, if the order of those ad events is important, can a bot not game that? It won't be linear. It won't always be the same. Well, linear in terms of our checks that we put in. So we'll have optimization based on how much time it should take. If somebody learns the time, remember that's only one of a whole piece of security checks and fraud checks. So a bot won't be able to easily learn, oh, they've got to wait five seconds, they've got to do that. Because we can check on the viewport on the mobile device, for example, if it's actually in view. And that's very difficult for a a bot to do, particularly when you're talking about rich media and the different types of events that we can track for every user journey. So I've made the scenario quite simple where it's just you start at one point and you you go to the end and you can track every event. But we can put in various checks along the way and that will be uh, very difficult for anybody to try and gain the system. Great. And if I understand correctly, that piece is independent of the ledger, right? You're you're using your special sauce, almost AI, to identify a real user and differentiate them from a bot. The ledger plays a role in giving transparency to those checks. Is that fair? Exactly. Yeah. You know, we have a number of checks that occur on the very beginning. We also even check the context of which an advert is going to appear on the page. So we make sure that it's brand safe. So one of the things that we sell to our agencies is that your advert is going to appear on a brand safe page. It's not going to appear on somewhere that, uh, you know, maybe breach of any policy violations across the world. So it's really a question of, you know, for us, this has solved one of the most critical starting point issues of the whole industry, and that's getting the transparency, solving and eliminating one of the big areas of fraud that you simply won't be able to do again, because we'll track it and we'll be able to measure it and we'll be able to see it relatively easily. And the next thing is moving on to really about the cryptocurrency payments. So at the moment, our current business involves paying publishers all around the world. And our first sort of you know, real interest point that started in early 2017 when we paid our first publisher in Bitcoin, we got really interested in how, you know, how could we use this to actually value the consumer's input into the ad industry? They're the ones that are clicking. They're the ones that are consuming. They're the ones that, you know, in many countries still, if a user is paying for their bandwidth, they're actually paying for an advert to be shown. I mean, that's just crazy. Making you pay to see the adverts and then we, you know, we optimize it so we, you know, can deliver a targeted message without your your intent, without your consent. So the industry from that point of view has to change. It has to be put the user first, reward them for their interaction and for the first time really start respecting their data. If they don't want to share any data, if they want to be completely anonymous, we respect that. If they want to tell us who they are, what they're doing, you know, interested in that future, we'll be able to monitor that and say, right, okay, well, you're interested in that. We're going to pay you more because you've given us access to your data. If you want to be anonymous, we'll help you to remain anonymous and you'll get a slightly lower reward than you would if you shared your data with us. So a core part of our vision to put the user at the the top of the value chain is to pay consumers for their participation in the ad industry. So the use of the Hedero cryptocurrency enables us to do that at very high transactions per second. And as I said last week, we did uh, 125 transactions per second in a, in a small test, and we could have gone a lot higher, and we certainly will be over the next next few months. 
So the big benefits that Hedera Hashgraph bring us is really firstly, the transactions per second. You know, that means that we can actually use this technology to deliver an advertising solution. And the key things around fairness, the security, and the use of a cryptocurrency at very low cost enable us to capture the data, sort the data, and use it in a meaningful way that people are actually going to trust. And the trust is the problem that we're trying to solve. And this is where Hedera Hashgraph help us with consensus. Great to hear. Ian, thanks so much for uh, sharing both your TPS and your roadmap for AdStack. I look forward to watching those TPS numbers grow. You're very welcome. And if anybody wants to uh, understand more about what we do or learn about the company, or if anybody's got any ad campaigns they'd like us to run, please do contact us. I'll be delighted. And we're going to be ramping up over the next few months. It won't be long before we'll be tracking a billion events and hundreds of millions of transactions on the Hedera Hashgraph network. So it's a fantastic time for us. I can't wait. Thanks again, Ian. You're welcome. Thanks a lot for your time. Cheers. Thank you for listening to Hedera Hashgraph's Gossip About Gossip. If you liked the episode, please subscribe, rate, and review, and also share and tell your friends. Or connect with us on social media like Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Hashgraph, particularly if you want to leave us feedback on the podcast. We look forward to hearing from you.